The next concept, the concept of confounding, is a very important one. And it is something that is little more than common. Say, I am very ill and someone has given me an allopathic medicine, saying that this is a very good medicine. And someone else has given me a homeopathic medicine, saying that that is a very good medicine. Now I want to know which one is a good medicine. So what I do is that I swallow both the medicines. I take the allopathic medicine and the homeopathic medicine. And after three days I get well. Now from this, can I really say that the allopathic medicine cured me? No. Can I say that the homeopathic medicine cured me? No either. It is quite possible that the two things, the two chemicals mixed together actually cured me. It is quite possible that the allopathic medicine actually cured me. The homeopathic medicine has no effect and the similar thing can be said about the homeopathic medicine. It is quite possible that I would possibly have been cured by only one medicine. I possibly have been cured by no medicine at all and these two medicines kept me ill longer than I should have been. In short, you cannot make any decision regarding these two medicines simply because you took them together. What you should have done is to apply it to different persons of identical nature. Only then you can say, well, the guy who got the allopathic medicine got well in three days and the guy who got homeopathic medicine got well in two days and now I can compare. <clears throat> so this is the idea of confounding. So confounding means if you apply two things, change two things simultaneously, then any change in output cannot be clearly attributed to this input or that input. Try to change the inputs one at a time. If you do not do that, then the two inputs are said to be confounded. Now that is a concept which is often <coughs> present in various disguised forms. So let's take an example like this. It becomes tricky especially when you are confounding between a treatment and a factor and a control factor or between two control factors that is factors which are beyond your control. Let's take this example. In many cases <coughs> many people will say especially in this part of the country say West Bengal that oh I have seen the Muslims, they are very, very uncleanly people. So if you go to any place where infested by Muslims, they are very, very dirty places. And that will be indeed borne out by actual fact. So if you visit places where you will see there are many, many Muslims, they are generally very dirty places. There is no doubt about that. So it seems to bear out this allegation that somehow this religion is connected with uncleanliness. So basically, Roughly speaking, we have such a black box in our mind where a, where a person is the unit and we have got religion as the input and we have cleanliness as the output. Of course, this is just a <coughs> non-mathematical example. I am not going to go into how you measure cleanliness as a continuous variable, etc. Suppose religion has got two levels, say Hindu and Muslim, and this is cleanliness. And if you just go about, say, various parts of Kolkata, various parts of West Bengal, you will really see that this Hindu-Muslim thing, that generally the Muslim infested parts are very <coughs> uncleanly and the Hindu infested parts are generally cleaner than that. However, if you look carefully, you will see that there is yet another factor which is playing a role. And that thing is the educational level. Now, the most of the Muslims that you see in and around Kolkata, they also happen to be of the poorer class and low education group class. Because, as it so happens in this part of the country, <coughs> only the very poor people are generally Muslims. So, the Muslims are generally poor people. They cannot afford good education. As a result, <coughs> when you are looking at a general Muslim, so to speak, most of them, you are looking at people with low educational level. So, it is quite possible that the uncleanliness that you see is because of low educational level. Whereas, when you look at a 
a bulk population of Hindus, they are a low education people as well as higher education people. So the difference that you see has nothing to do possibly with religion. It can be explained using the difference in educational levels. In this case, these two factors are basically confounded when you just do an observational study, just take social study. You observe whatever you get to observe. In that case, you will see that whenever religion becomes from Hindu to Muslim, the educational level also generally falls. So it is basically like this. <coughs> Say I take three educational levels. I call them low, medium and high and Hindu and Muslim. So I have got six cells. So I can draw a meaningful conclusion only when I know all these six cells are nicely represented. <coughs> but... If you just go about this part of the country and observe whatever you can observe, in that case you will see that typically only the purple boxes are represented in your sample. So you have only low income group, uh, sorry, low education level Muslims and medium level and high level Hindus. So the bulk comes from this group. So you see the moment the religion changes, so does the education. So you have really not looked at all the cells. So you are basically comparing a low education Muslim with a high education Hindu and trying to say whatever difference you see is because of the religion. That will, will not be fair. So from this you cannot really conclude anything. That's my point. I'm not saying you can conclude either for Hindu, against Hindu, for Muslim, against Muslim. I'm merely saying that if you, your data set is like this, then you have a confounding, confounding between these two factors. The linear algebra will remain happy, R will remain happy, but the conclusion will not be meaningful. So make sure all these things are properly represented and you are changing one factor at a time. If I have some observation here, Hindu and low income group, then you can compare the cleanliness of these two cells to get an idea about the difference between Hindu and Muslim. But here, there is nothing in this cell, so you are comparing this cell with that cell. Which means you are basically changing both the religion as well as the educational level and you do not know that the change that you see is because of this or that or because of simultaneous presence of both the changes. You have no way of knowing it. That is called confounding and it is a good idea to try to avoid that.